test is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. I am Mike Jones, the Director of Education with the Oracle Applications and Technologies Users Group. I'm very excited to welcome everyone to today's session entitled Empower Your Procurement Process with Spreadsheet Mastery, Streamline Data, and Improve Quality. Before we dive in, I'd like to briefly introduce everyone to the OETUG. In case you're new to our programming, we are a community of Oracle users, and we provide education, networking, and support to our members. Quick reminder for today's webinar, you will be on mute throughout the session. However, you're welcome to send any questions at any time in the question area of the control panel. Uh, we are recording this session. The recording as well as the slide deck will be available to OETUG members in the knowledge base. Finally, I'd like to turn it over for to today's speakers for today. We've uh, got Wes Holmes and Andrew Gooch. Take away, guys. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, so Wes and I will be uh, presenting today's session, like um, we just heard, the Spreadsheet Mastery, Empower Your pro Procurement Process with Spreadsheet Mastery. So the idea here is to just learn about how we can empower our processes with spreadsheets. So uh, let's give a big thanks to OATUG for organizing this. Um, it sounds like there'll be a recording available. Um, so we'll, we'll briefly touch on who we are. Uh, we'll just touch on who we are just in a second. I'm just going to put up an agenda so uh, everyone knows what um, they're in for today. So um, we're going to start with some introductions. Um, firstly, our two speakers and then I'll introduce who more for apsis because that's um, part of the, the topic today uh, and then we'll look at the general challenges we face with data entry in procurement. We'll look at some approaches to tackling those problems using a spreadsheet based tool to organize and create or update your data into Oracle and then I'll briefly touch on some of the options available to you and then we'll look at the more for app solution which is called the ERP cloud toolbox procurement module and then I'll try to give you a little sense of what that's all about um, running through some example scenarios that should be interesting to watch and at the end we'll hopefully have a bit of time for Q&A so um, you have to get your questions ready as we run through the presentation and we'll come to those at the end of the session but let's get started first off I'll ask uh, Wes to give a little bit of background about himself if that's okay okay yeah thanks Andrew um, so I'm a Wes Holmes uh, with uh, Global NCIS. We focus on maintenance. This uh, webinar is um, being sponsored by the uh, the maintenance SIG, uh, both e EBS and cloud. And uh, we're happy to do this for you. We think that from a from a maintenance perspective, uh, this provides a lot of value to our users, um, being able to with uh, with medium and high level uh, procurement requirements for the maintenance organization it's a, uh, a good way to, to streamline those operations. So we hope you enjoy it. Um, Andrew? Thank you, Wes. Back to you. Yeah. Brilliant. So yeah, I'm Andrew Gooch. I'm uh, one of the More for Apps sort of Oracle experts, if you like. I've been with More for Apps for about 15 years now. Um, my current role is focused on uh, product delivery. So we're explaining what we have as a product suite and helping the adoption for our um, customers. Uh, but my background is technical. Um, I came from a development and a DBA background originally, and I've been uh, in the Oracle space for a long time now, going back to 11i days. More recently, it's been more on the functional side. So uh, I've got pretty decent exposure to a lot of the problems you might be facing in data integration, which is a lot of what we're talking about today. But what about more for apps? Why, why would you want to listen to who, uh, what we have to say? Who are we, basically? The company was formed um, about 20 years ago now to address limitations with data entry performance in the Oracle ERP. That was 11i at that time, and it later became eBusiness Suite. And we provide a range of tools in that space under the EBS Toolbox banner. And our experience over the years there has led us to um, become one of the benchmark products within Oracle for spreadsheet-based loading. And now with uh, Cloud Fusion, we've got a new suite of products under the ERP Cloud Toolbox banner. And later on, we'll be talking about that in a bit of detail. I'm just going to turn off my webcam now, just so we don't have any um, issues with, with bandwidth. 
And we're going to start with talking uh, about procurement. I'm going to hand over to Wes here because he's the expert um, from a product usage point of view. So Wes, if uh, you could take the stage, please. Hey, thanks, Andrew. Okay, so in today's webinar, we're going to focus on um, Oracle procurement and, of course, Oracle procurement with relation to uh, maintenance and repair, uh, the maintenance modules, as well as uh, project integration, which is really a, a, our world from a maintenance perspective. Um, purchasing is very uh, important to us and our processes. So first of all, let me lead off and say, hey, you know what? Oracle procurement is awesome. It is popular, it's mature, it's powerful. Um, there is absolutely, it, it does what it says it's gonna do and it brings the functionality to the table that if that functionality weren't there, uh, we wouldn't be able to use that to enhance it, um, which is we're gonna share with you today. Um, especially now here in the cloud fusion apps, it's really taken uh, a step forward, a real step forward in functionality. And, um, and we're very happy with that, right? So as everyone knows, uh, the whole point of having all that great functionality is to acquire goods and services. So what we really wanna do here today is, is talk about acquiring goods and services, right? So we use this product to request purchases, to then order them from our suppliers, and then receive the goods and services and make sure all the accounting is correct and either goes to um, you know, a projects module or to the general ledger. It gets uh, issued to the maintenance module. All the accounting goes right there um, is really some of the key business requirements and business reasons that we want this to happen uh, in an efficient manner. OK, so um, these can be driven by maintenance repair. They can be driven by projects. They can be driven by other requirements. But one of the things about it is, as we're going to talk about now, is it's also heavy on process. And so what we want to be able to do is create and update our procurement documents um, to be able to communicate with our suppliers in as efficient a manner as we possibly can. That's the goal. So having that in mind, if we re can reduce as much friction as possible from that sequence, then that's what our, we're in good shape. That's what we're trying to do here today. Um, all right, a couple more key points. Now, Oracle's main approach to data entry is what you're looking at right here. One of our uh, front end user forms. Um, we have these forms for acquisitions, for purchases, uh, purchase orders, um, and for any contract agreements, all the different kinds of contract agreements we have. And of course, there's a lot of administration um, keeping all these things together and synchronized. Um, so for requisitions, you know, we have the self-service online shopping. It's very easy. It's very friendly, just like uh, you go to Best Buy or something. Um, the forms themselves are great, right? Uh, from the pr perspective of functionality, everything's at your fingertips, but what we want to talk about now is for the, the the low volume it's great for the medium to high volume it, there's a trade off there's a trade off cuz all that uh, functionality also brings overhead right so when it comes to navigating these forms we're talking about and the one we're looking at and all the sub forms you begin as a user to lose the visibility to the bigger picture when you have to drill in and out of the details given for the document. So now if you're gonna consider the scope of the data that we're collecting, um, it, especially as you go into some of the user-defined fields like descriptive flex fields, um, once again, um, we're gonna look at that trade-off and to do that, um, Mike, went, uh, not Mike, but Andrew, please go to the next uh, slide. So we're gonna look at the exactly what that means. Okay, so anybody who has done procurement, um, we all know this, we, we live and breathe this every day. So this is nothing new here. This is the, the common Oracle format. We have the header for the agreement or for the purchase order itself or for the requisition for that matter. And we have one or many lines. Um, let's assume that we're doing a high volume. So we're gonna have a header, we're gonna have many lines. Some are gonna be goods, some are gonna be services. Um, it might be a 
We're going to get into the detail of that. As we drill into the detail, we're going to have uh, a ship to, because we may be buying and shipping to different places. Um, we may have different distribution accounting, because we may be buying and we're, we're splitting the cost across departments. Uh, let's say it's a service. So we're going to be splitting costs across many departments. So we have, may have many distributions associated with one ship to location, um, one line, and each and every one of those, and this is what we're trying to overcome today, is having the user go into each of these lines, drill into the ship to, drill into the distributions in the detail areas, and then go back up to the line level and come back up to the next line and drill down into those levels again. So what we're looking for is a more efficient way to do that across your, uh, your enterprise. So with that, Mr. Andrew, I'll give it back to you. Hope that all makes sense. Thanks, Wes. Yeah, so the decisions your organization make uh, in terms of this data capture they really matter. If you've got an inefficient procurement process, you're going to get delays, errors, higher costs basically. And our end goal is to reduce supply chain issues and improve our data accuracy. So what we're going to show you today is an approach uh, that can help you do that with the aid of something that we're all familiar with. So what if we take all that info and put it into a spreadsheet and load it from there? So just remember that um, complicated process flow you just saw and compare it with this flat format. All the data visible at once. So those tedious navigation steps just drop right away. So this is a screenshot from the Morpher Apps product which leverages an Excel spreadsheet for the data collection. Now the advantages of the approach are obvious, right? Excel is easy to understand. It's a tool that's been around for a long time. Everybody knows it, and we don't need a lot of training to get running with it. You get wide visibility of your data because you can see everything at once in one sheet. You've got rows and rows of capacity. You can load lots of things at once, and you get those nice features uh, like copy and paste to accelerate the data entry. Plus, spreadsheets are already in digital format, so you can fill them up from other digital sources relatively easily. And that's all going to help you reduce your data entry timeframes. Within a spreadsheet, once I've laid the data out once, uh, I can use all those data entry and replication features across the grid, saving huge amounts of time entering my records. And then with the right tool, one button creates all the documents at once. And Oracle agrees. Uh, they've created a number of mechanisms to capitalize on those advantages. Uh, listed them here. Um, ADFDI, FBDI and VBCS would be the most well known. They're all different flavors along the same theme. They're all geared towards leveraging the spreadsheet grid layout to handle multiple documents or elements of documents at once, reducing the need to click around the front end forms each time. And Excel features like copy and paste, formulas, replication techniques like copy down, copy right, allow the end user to manipulate that data more comfortably across multiple documents. So the general workflow is to populate the rows of the spreadsheet all together up front and then load them all simultaneously with one user action or one user process. And they all employ different methods to achieve it. ADFDI and VBCS probably offer the best approach. The, the data is entered and loaded in the spreadsheet, well, all within the spreadsheet, and results for some of the steps are returned to the spreadsheet. If BDI, on the other hand, is, is more static, data is prepared in the spreadsheet before it's processed by the Oracle front end. But within procurement, the choice is a little more limited. Um, ADFDI templates, um, which a lot of other departments will be using within GL and what's, whatnot, don't really exist for most of the tasks that you're going to be interested in. Yeah, you can close your schedules, but you'll need to employ a different approach for creating and maintaining most of your open documents. But just to paint the picture, um, this is an example. This is the closed schedules ADFDI template. So um, let's just run through how that works. There's an option on the task list there to close the schedules in a spreadsheet. And you've got some rudimentary download filters there. I'll just click through the screenshot. So when you open the spreadsheet, 
which is generated, you log into Oracle, that generates the download from Oracle, based on the filters we gave in the form. And then the selected PO schedules land into the sheet. And you get a list of values to pick from. Of course, with this simple piece of functionality, there's really only two actions, uh, close and finally close. And then you control your process and upload with controls up here in the ribbon. Now, for the purposes of closing the schedules, the user experience is pretty good, but you might find some of the limitations get in your way. I won't spend too much time with them, um, but the download filter is a bit limited. Um, it's by line, so you're going to get a lot of lines per order, depending on the complexity of your POs. And there's also a limit um, to about 5,000 lines, so that could be a stumbling block from time to time. And I believe I'm right in saying that Oracle's intention is to end date support for ADFDI over the long term. And the current recommendation is to build VBCS solutions to ensure future-proofed processes. So what's um, VBCS? Well, with that engine, you have the engine available to you, but you are going to need to create the loading integrators yourselves. Look, it's very powerful VBCS, and it can be used to execute a whole range of web services and entry points into Cloud Fusion. But I need to temper your excitement a bit with it because there's a big upfront barrier there to using it, which is you have to physically build those loaders you need. And I'm not going to suggest you don't do it, but many of the organizations we speak to have bought into the software as a service model now and no longer have those technical resources to hand to research, build and maintain those solutions because they're essentially many IT projects in their own right. So that brings us to FBDI, um, which is the most heavily used, and you can see it here. This is the purchase order template, and the requisition one is pretty similar. And you can see there are tabs for the different layers of data, header, line, and location, which is uh, schedules and distributions. And on the header tab here, we lay out our invoice summary data, but without the line details. So there's one line per order. And then the lines get added on this tab, and you need to link them to the orders on the previous tab using a repetition of the interface header and then the line keys. So the first row here corresponds to the first order we had on the other tab and the second and third rows to the second there and so on. And that continues down the data hierarchy. So with the schedules, you link the line location key to the line key. And then again on the distributions tab, distribution key links to the line location key. Now, it can be a bit fiddly because you can't see all those different levels of data at the same time. So there's a bit of clicking in and out of tabs to line things up correctly. Oh, I've gone too far. Apologies. Didn't mean to do that. Um, now, FPDI is definitely the most mature of the Oracle spreadsheet solutions. Um, there's tons of functional support available. You've got purchase orders requisitions, receipts, and so on. And the data capture is really broad. So there's tons of columns available in most cases to capture everything. But for the uninitiated, there are some user uh, issues there, some usability issues, sorry, because you don't have the visibility of the whole hierarchy at once. So there's a bit of scope for user error if bits of data get missed out on one tab that you're relying on in another. But that being said, a skilled operation operator can accomplish quite a lot with it. But where the most resistance comes to FBDI is the load process. There are things to do in the sheet, CSV, conver CSV conversions to do, import jobs to run in the forms, error reports in PDF format that you have to decipher, and then corrections get put back into the worksheet before a reload. So it's a lot of steps and you'll be relying on some significant expertise in your teams to drive it all forward. And going back to what I said earlier, in this uh, software as a service environment, a lot of organizations find themselves quite limited when it comes to technical resources to achieve complex tasks like this. It's really geared for implementations, migrations, that sort of thing, where there's a one-off task to populate Oracle. It's not really that well suited to BAU. The expertise that you need to populate the spreadsheet is quite different to that you'll need to drive the upload. So you're going to get a lot more people involved than you'd really ideally want to have involved. But look, these are good tools and the right organization can get a lot of value from them. 
particularly VBCS and FBDI, provided you're looking at the process correctly. But actually, they're really mass load tools. They're not business process tools. And really, really want to put the business process at the centre of our minds and choose the best tools accordingly. Otherwise, we might be making our lives harder rather than easier. Oh, Andrew, if I could add to that. Go ahead. Cool. Um, right, so as a user of a lot of these templates, uh, FBDI specifically, they're great mass load templates. And if that's all we need to do is mass load our, our, our key data, our master data, then yeah, I mean, I would use these tools every day. Um, we're talking today about going beyond that and taking our tools into um, the transaction into the business process itself, a day in the life business process is not where these templates necessarily shine. They have their place, but as you go into um, the everyday, um, uh, what we're gonna show you here, I think is gonna resonate. Uh, Andrew, go ahead. Thanks, Wiz. It's a pretty simple diagram here. What we're trying to do is make that sad face happy. We need to remove the friction and, and speed up our business processes. So we're going to talk today about how the Morphraps ERP Cloud Toolbox can help you do that. It's painless to implement, and because of that familiar Excel interface, you don't need any training to use it. So with any luck, you'll be smiling in no time. So this is the, the marketing, if you like it, of it. That's the banner. The focus for these tools, um, the ERP Cloud Toolbox is to take that pain out of the loading. It's an out of the box, business focused approach to mass loading. So it's gonna integrate with your business process so you can streamline those processes and reduce the need to lean on IT or technical resources on any sort of day-to-day -day basis. So the procurement module is designed to mitigate that reliance within procurement and it's geared for your end users rather than system experts. So you can leave it in the hands of your data owners and not need to involve dedicated IT resources because your buyers know their stuff. And so with the right tools in their hands, the procurement of project and business related goods and services tied together with your work orders is gonna be that much more efficient. So this is what it looks like. We saw a flash of it earlier on. The product uh, works as an Excel add-in. So you've got dedicated controls for uploading and downloading in the worksheet. And it's designed to give you maximum visibility of your whole document at one time. So the whole of the data hierarchy is in one sheet. Headers, lines, all there together. So there's less scope to miss elements out for a given document because you can scroll across and inspect that everything is there as you'd expect. The download feature is worth emphasizing. This is the ability to directly source the sheet with Oracle data, and it can't be overstated for updates or any data replication tasks that you might be performing. On the usability side, edit forms allow you to inspect multiple elements for a data section at the same time. And there's Oracle validation lists behind all those controls, so you can ensure a really clean data set. And on the loads, you'll get feedback directly in row for your uploads. And errors are clearly marked and generally will indicate which field you'll need to correct. The layouts are flexible. The tool uses those column headings in row nine to identify the purpose of each column. And that means you're free to move columns around as you see fit to give you the most agreeable working environment. And columns can also be removed if you're not using them without impacting the load. So you can design a worksheet it absolutely fits your process without any unnecessary guff. The upload process is driven from within Excel and invokes the Oracle public web services. These are generally the REST services, and there are no steps to perform from outside the spreadsheet. So we're gonna work through some sample business scenarios here. We'll start with purchase requisitions and we'll look at how that scenario um, can be handled, uh, creating some of these in the Morphraps tool. Now, like I said, there's no seeded ADFDI and certainly no VBCS templates for this area. So for mass uploads, your other option would be FBDI, which suffers from those difficulties we mentioned in terms of 
user experience and rigid workflow. And there's also a problem there with updates, which aren't handled well. With the ERP Cloud Toolbox, we like to think we've catered for all of that. So I'm going to walk you through the scenario of creating a few requisitions. So you can imagine how that might work for your organization. So we have the requisition template open here in Excel. And at the top of the screen, you can see the more fraps controls. We're creating new records, so we need to get our data into the worksheet. We might start by typing data values directly into the spreadsheet. We can leverage all the power of Excel. And of course, that includes formulas. And we can copy and paste from an external source. We can also apply default values to save time entering the same values over and over again. And those values will automatically populate in the rows where the load happens. And how about with data accuracy? We've got built-in forms, which mirror the Oracle validation rules and list the values for each element. You can see the FlexBuild support there too. There's support for attachments. So if we use the form to create one, you can see that all the attachment types are supported. And we can set the category and so on as you'd expect. And of course, select our file in the pop-up which makes things easy. So sheet layouts are completely flexible. At any time, we can shift columns around to get them in the order we prefer and remove unwanted columns. So we can customize our sheet to suit the business process. We click on upload to send it all up to Oracle. So you can see here where upload rejections occur, the messaging is clear. And wherever possible, the problem cell is highlighted. So it's easy to fix the data and upload the corrected record. And we can use the built-in download button to check those requisitions loaded correctly. There's a form which lets you choose download criteria. But hey, we know the ones we're after. So we can just put those requisition numbers in here and download them using download via sheet. And there's those three new requisitions. And you can see, how handy it is to be able to review the full detail of so many at the same time, not being limited to one at a time, like in the Oracle forms. And from here, we could proceed to make updates or create further records. So Wes, did you want to speak to this slide? Oh yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that was great, um, Andrew, thank you. So I think I just wanted to, Kind of reiterate from a business perspective how all this is going to work together so i mean the spreadsheets are bringing in not only um, that basic you know procurement information and that was requisitions which of course you can touch all of our modules from from the having the maintenance work order as part of that line option to having the project task and expenditure as part of that single row option and having that single row to go across and validate that, yep, that's what I want to buy, and have other users sending you that information that you can just paste into this uh, spreadsheet and click upload is extremely valuable. As we look at this being done in procurement, we can also look up at uh, over at maintenance and understand that um, it's on the same line in this template, and all that information is going to come over to maintenance properly. And if we look at projects, I have both the maintenance information coming to projects for internal costs associated with a project. I also have everything coming over from procurement to projects um, as a, uh, a source of external uh, purchases. Um, what we're not going to get into in detail today is the product that supports projects itself. So you can also then build all your project structures um, in a more for apps similar spreadsheet and then all that is going to be utilized by the procurement both the procurement and the maintenance module so, um, they're all integrated and that's what i wanted to share thanks uh, andrew thanks wiz so we saw the requisition side of things and what's the next step well assuming those requisitions are approved we need to get them to our suppliers and that means generating a purchase order now the front end user forms can be used for that. And it can be done fairly easily for low data volumes. But the navigation is tedious as we know, and in high volumes, that's quite a roadblock. 
And look, this has been recognized for years. Oracle has an automation process in place called uh, Document Builder. Uh, it was called AutoCreate in the EBS Times. Um, and this facilitates the conversion of requisition lines into purchase orders. And if it's configured correctly, it'll strip out most of the manual steps. And I'd be surprised if most, if not all, of this audience is making some use of that. But that document building automation is limited. And there are a number of factors which can break the machinery for a given requisition. You can see some of them listed on this slide uh, and the next slide. This is a bit of text taken from Oracle's using procurement document for 23B. So the list continues on there. And ultimately, no matter what automation you have in place, it's likely you'll need to manually create purchase orders from requisitions. This can happen when sourcing changes often meaning frequent adjustments or updates, or if there's a high need for flexibility in who you are procuring from, or if the range of goods and services um, makes the administration of automation greater actually than the effort to create the purchase orders manually. It requires the setting up of blanket agreements, quotes, quotations, sorry, approved suppliers, sourcing rules. So there's a lot of admin involved there. And then what do we do with the requisitions which fall down in automation, or if we don't have the ability to employ it? Well, for that, there's a requisition processing form which you can use to manually create or add to purchase orders from selected requisition lines. And it's quite efficient for small volumes, especially if your process is to create one purchase order for every requisition, meaning you're happy to ha um, send multiple POs to each supplier. But there are some challenges. Your buyers are required to sort the requisition lines uh, in what you can see is quite a limited screen area here. The select and add process is by requisition, so you need to select them individually. Yes, you can select multiples, but there may be gaps, unselected lines if you like, and you can only see nine rec lines on the screen at one time. So in this screen, the purchase order creation is basically one at a time. Your buyers are then forced to go back and select more lines for the next purchase order, and so on. It's designed for simple, small volumes of requisition lines, and it's sensitive to variations and volumes and the quality of sourcing data, which can affect the workload and the performance of your buyers. The spreadsheet approach tackles most of these limitations, and the procurement module has this feature built in. So your buyers can download unfulfilled requisition lines into Excel, sort the lines there in an order that makes uh, the building of the POs simpler, and create multiple purchase orders all at the same time. So they can work through the entire set of requisition lines quickly and easily within Excel. So let's see that in action now. So this is the document builder sheet. First thing we need are the open requisitions. So we'll use the download form to bring them in. We put in the business unit, and we'll use the date controls to bring in some requisitions that were created recently. And that'll bring back all the open lines that aren't already on a purchase order. So you can see 11 there, with all the line detail. Now we want to group them into separate supplier POs, so we'll remove the sourcing BU value, and we'll use Excel to sort them for us. So scrolling over, we can see the supplier column there. So with the Excel sort function, we can sort them by supplier, and we'll group them by category and item too. So there's our grouping, two suppliers and some that have no supplier. So we'll put those supplier details into the sourcing columns to generate the PO headers correctly. And we'll use the defaults row to populate the other details there. So for the ones with no supplier against them, we can put one in. Now we could do that in the sheet, but there's also data forms available, and we can use that to search and select the supplier, which makes it much easier to get the right site value in. Now we'll want to submit those to be processed into POs at the same time, so we'll use the defaults for that too. But those columns are in an awkward place, so let's move them over to the left so we can see the results easier after the load. As we saw before, you always had that flexibility to move columns around and move them too. Now that we're ready, we just click Upload. 
So the result came back and everything was created as expected. The headers are green, all the lines were valid and the submit came back green too. The submission returned the PO numbers in the message. You can see three of them there. And we can use an Excel function to strip those numbers out. So if we do that, we can paste them into a standard purchase order worksheet and inspect them with a download. So for the first one, there are three lines for the separate items, and then a distribution for each of the requisition lines. And we could go ahead now and make any adjustments to the price or anything like that using the standard PO functionality. So we've seen um, Document Builder. Um, I think Wes would probably like to um, have a few words there. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. So yeah, just to, just to, to reiterate, um, in EBS, the auto create functionality was uh, when they when that when that was developed um, was a, a huge milestone. I think you can see that you know really we've made another milestone here. That the auto create functionality now called Doc Document Builder. Um, does all that information, but as you can also uh, understand quite personally, I would suspect most of the people on the call um, that you you've been through this process and you understand that the maintenance it takes to go in and and keep cons constant uh, keep consistent and 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 upfront the information that's in those spreadsheets um, is a, is just a task in and of itself. Um, one of the things I like about the spreadsheets and versus in the forms is we bring in down all the va uh, validation information. So, you know, uh, it, it gets validated automatically. As Andrew um, demonstrated, he can go in and, and, and select from the list of values. But even if you just put in what uh, it, it, you think it is, it's going to then flag that and make sure you put the, the right um, validated information in there, which is key to the Oracle process. And we're following, um, they're following all these rules. Um, so it supports the auto create process, the validation process, and streamlines the requisition uh, to procurement business processes um, for our users. And once again, that, you know, uh, bringing it back to the maintenance cloud, that maintenance work order is going to be in there and or it may be a project that's in there, um, getting the external cost as well as the maintenance uh, to projects link, bringing in the, the maintenance costs. So, thanks, uh, thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Wes. Right, so once the POs are in, we might find there are errors in them. And until now, there hasn't really been that much available in terms of tools to efficiently maintain and update purchase orders. And most organizations rely on the front end for that. But it doesn't have to be so. The ERT, ERP toolbox allows for updates. Now, Oracle does limit what you can and can't update on a purchase order, so keep that in mind. Uh, it is highlighted in the video. Um, but we'll take a look now at the purchase order maintenance to see how it looks. So this is the purchase order template and we'll use it to do a mass PO update. We can source PO data from Oracle using a download. There's a form like we saw earlier. Yeah, we know the numbers, so we'll just download them via sheet. Now Oracle has strict rules about what you can and can't update in purchasing. For purchase orders at the header level, it's limited to supplier details, DFFs and attachments. But check your Oracle documentation because rules change depending on the order status. At line level, there's a bit more. You can change amounts and quantities, units of measures, etc. Again, the order status is key, so make sure you are familiar with that. The shipment and delivery dates can be changed on the schedule, and there's a bit of accounting detail you can change on the distribution. And there are also similar limitations on the requisition side. In this PO example, though, we'll change some schedule values. Let's imagine the supplier has informed us of delays, and we can update the orders to reflect that. Set the action to update, and copy that down, put in the new dates, and you could use formulas here if it helps. Copy down again. And Oracle expects a change reason, so we'll give the same for all of the records. Now we're making a change to the order, so we better flag that. We'll update the order, but instead of doing it for each row, we'll use the defaults row, 
selected the action to update, scroll over and set the change description and party. Now by default the update will not be submitted for approval and that change order status will remain incomplete. So we'll avoid that by doing the approval submission at the same time as the update. And we can, oh, got ahead of myself. And we can upload all the updates at once. Done. And we can verify the act that's happened using another download. We'll paste those PO numbers back in and download via sheet again. And then scrolling over, there's our new promise delivery dates. So where's if you wanted to have a few words? Great. Yeah, you know, I, I, that, that was actually very enlightening. Um, it really, I just, uh, the, uh, the, the high points, right? You can go in there and create, update, and approve the PO lines um, without any limitations that are in the, uh, that, and that's why we're talking about medium to uh, large volumes, if that's what you have, or if you have uh, lots of facilities where there are, are many requisitioners, for example, uh, many buyers, um, being able to really streamline this process makes makes a lot of uh, uh, brings a lot of value. That's it. Go ahead. Thanks, Wes. Well, the last stage of the journey for purchase orders is closures or cancellations. Now we saw there's an ADFDI for this at the schedule level, but the procurement module goes a step further and allows for it at all levels. So we'll just quickly look at that process in action. So we've already seen the flexibility to simplify column layouts to the task at hand. And this sheet shows the most basic layout for cancelling POs, just the bare minimum of columns. We can paste in our order numbers. And those defaults for the action, cancel reason, and unfulfilled demand flag will do all the work for us. Just click on upload. And those orders are cancelled now. Now you'll notice we didn't download the orders, we just put the numbers in. But we can download them if we wish, perhaps if we want to see the details before we go off cancelling things. There's a download form, and we can use that. Put in our filters, date range. We could put in the order status if we wanted. But the download by sheet is likely to be the most useful. You can explicitly put in your PO numbers in any order. And they don't have to be in sequence or anything like that. And that's a huge win on a task like this. So if I scroll over, you can see the download brings back a lot of descriptive information to help you decide what you need to cancel. And you can see that the cancellation can be done at header, line, and schedule level. Either all at once or you can mix and match. In this example, you can see we're doing cancellations at all three levels at the same time. And of course, that advanced validation lets us know if something is missing or not right for a particular order. We can get that message back so we can identify and fix the problem and then upload it again. So just to emphasize what you saw there, this is a comparison sheet against what you'd have if you weren't using this product, especially if you're using the ADFDI side of things. There's that advanced validation in the spreadsheet that we saw, and, and Wes talked about that in the other scenario. And the ability to cancel at any or all levels of the order detail. And there are more options around on that download. You can download specific orders by number or by supplier without having to put ranges in all the time. And that last one is really important too. If you know the order number, you don't need to do a download at all. Just put in the order number into the sheet and do your close or cancel without any extra steps. Now, the astute amongst you uh, might also recognize that the tool does have an advantage here over any VBCS solution that you might think to build in-house. VBCS is a little bit limited in how it handles the deep data hierarchies, and it won't let you build the whole data structure into one integrator. So cancelling at all levels, header line, schedule, etc., it would not be easily achievable as a one-step process there.
Well, obviously we've uh, spoken quite a lot about the procurement module today. And we've had a look at a number of the areas there where the MorphRap solution can help you. But Oracle Cloud Fusion is a much bigger beast um, and your organization will be leveraging many aspects of it. And the Cloud Toolbox supports you along that journey. So we'll often be purchasing based on the demands of our projects and our projects module supports the setup and maintenance of all of that for you. So you can enjoy the same benefits we've seen today in that area and while doing your budgeting and all of that stuff. And we've just added some new features there for project templates and planning RBS. We have the product definition module to support the complicated process of defining items and their relationships and structures. And last but not least, the all important finance module. So plenty of useful tools right across the ERP. And we'll be happy to share information on any of those that might be of interest to you and your business. But that's the end of the prescribed content. And we do have some time for questions. Um, you can direct them at myself or at Wes. Um, I'm not too sure how we're collecting these. Wes, are you able to see the chat? Um, I think that uh, Mike would probably do that uh, if there are any questions at this point in time. Um, yep. If there are any uh, questions, Andrew, that was, yeah, Mike. Yep. Go ahead. If there are any questions, uh, please type it in the chat area of your control panel. And obviously, not, if you have any questions that come up after this, um, you can get in touch with either of us through our email addresses there. So uh, don't feel on the spot. Perfect. Yeah, after, yeah I'm not after, seeing any after. questions. Nice one. Okay, okay, well, we'll just wrap things up. Um, I'll let yeah, um, I want to Wes, thank if you, you want to talk to this slide. Yeah, and, and I want to just uh, to thank you for, for, for your time putting this together and, and really kind of focusing it on, you know, what uh, the, the maintenance SIG is looking for um, from a procurement perspective. And, you know, I hope they all share this with their uh, procurement uh, colleagues as well um, to really you know streamline that process so having said that uh, yeah it's the the oracle um, user group uh, special interest groups the geos we're all here for you um, we want to bring to you um, webinars like this that are going to help you make a decision on how you strategically and tactically um, choose to um, execute your business processes using the Oracle um, EBS or cloud framework. And, um, and uh, beyond that, uh, I think we have uh, the, the 2024 um, Ascend support uh, of the uh, OATUG. Um, Andrew, do you want to give any closing words before Mike uh, uh, shuts us, uh, completes the uh, process? <laughs> Now I'd just like to thank everyone in the audience for their attendance. Um, it's a pleasure giving you guys this presentation today. Thanks, and thank you, Mike and uh, and Jamie, for uh, for your help and assistance. Our pleasure. All right, this will conclude the webinar. Everyone, have a great day.